listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello, IELTS students. In this tutorial, we are looking at sample health topics for writing task two. Specifically, we're going to look at question analysis, simplifying the question, generating ideas, giving you sample ideas and vocabulary, and then dropping them into the framework. And this is the process that we have on our online course. We're getting a ton of success. So Alexandria, well done. Your essays are very, very uh, impressive, especially considering from what we started with. And just for the listeners, um, Alexandria was one of those students who was uh, writing a lot for her essays, but the problem was it wasn't really on topic and there was a lot of repetition in there as well. And also there were a few occasional grammar mistakes that she had no idea that she was making. However, after just writing a couple of essays and watching a few tutorials, we saw some amazing improvements. And, you know, we gave her some tips on, you know, the, gr the correct phrases to use and which phrases to avoid using again and again because they were just getting repeated and we gave her alternatives that were slight, that would help her score slightly higher but definitely improve the grammatical range and accuracy score as well. Also, just for those um, who are not so familiar with the online course, after every essay that you send to us, we return a model essay with all the perfect vocabulary you need. And for some of the questions as well, we'll give you the vocab list of suggest suggested terms to help you improve your essay. And those suggested terms are the ones you include in your essay. And it just makes it more straightforward for you as a learner and faster as well. You just improve faster. So anyway, let's jump into today's course and to today's topic. We're going to be talking about health and maybe top, this is one of those topics where your mind goes blank. So listening to this tutorial is going to help you get more ideas. You're going to hear more vocabulary and you're going to hear, uh, you're going to get a very brief overview of how to attack your IELTS writing task two, how to approach it in, in the fastest, most efficient way possible. Let's have a look. Um, even when poor countries get help from rich countries, hunger is still an issue. Discuss probable causes and solutions. Support your answer with specific reasons and examples. Quite a lot of distractions there. So let's simplify the question. Discuss probable causes, body paragraph one, and solutions, body paragraph two. This is the simplest way I can, I can think of to attack this essay. And I'm going to get the, the, to attack this question. I'm going to get full points because I am covering all of the question requirements and also obviously I'm going to include in my body paragraph reasons with examples. Let's have a look at the question again. Even when poor countries get help from rich countries, hunger is still an issue. Discuss the probable causes. Simplify it. Even, yeah, Countries, poor countries get help from rich countries. Hunger is still a problem. What's, what, why, basically? Why is this the issue? Why is this the issue? So I kind of simplified the question in my mind. It's easier to work with. I'll just, I'll probably check again to see if I've got the right simplification because sometimes we can simplify it and find out actually not only have I simplified it, but I've probably changed it a little bit. So it's quite important here just to check a few times you are still answering the question asked. In our case, we are definitely still on topic. So let's see. Why why do country poor countries get help from rich countries regarding food, 
but still not solved. One phrase that comes to mind is, you know, give a man fish, he'll eat for a day. Give a man a fishing rod and he can fish for a lifetime. So I could develop that. I probably won't include that in my essay. Um, If I were an IELTS student and it wasn't my native language, I'd probably avoid that because it could be a little bit tricky. But I can still take the idea of this. So let's go. Um, Let's see. Uh, Rich countries help poor countries uh, with regard to food aid. Um, The reason... uh, However, the problem is still not solved. This is because um, the food aid can come, but is usually used up. And in a lot of cases, the country actually needs um, resources such as water pumps, agricultural equipment, and even seeds so that they can provide their own food. Okay? Okay. So that's reasonable. Studies have shown just, uh, studies have shown merely sending, which is just a way, a nice, more academic way of saying just send, just sending, merely sending food aid only helps relieve the problem for a month or two, depending on the quantity of the food. It is also an ongoing cost for the sending country. Um, Let's see. Now, we don't want to go on to solutions. I don't... I I did initially want to develop this idea of sending seeds and agricultural equipment and all of this, but I'm going to try and save this for body paragraph two. So I'm going to now just... I've mentioned it, but I'm going to develop it more in body paragraph two. Um, Other problems or other causes um, that aid does not solve is the is the fact that it does not address the the root cause of the famine or starvation again improving my lexical resource score by using alternatives to hunger um, for example certain governments can have Um, corrupt regimes and politicians in place that may just take the resources sent and use them in their own community or even worse sell them to the local population and try and make a profit and if the local population doesn't have money then obviously there is still the problem of obviously the problem of hunger still exists so that's another reason. And I'm, I'm, I'm just focusing on the causes. And now for my final cause, I haven't gone on to solutions yet, although I was tempted to. For the final cause, I'm going to talk about uh, sometimes these areas are unstable and in a civil war or in a war with a neighboring country. And therefore, the question of logistics and sending food becomes incredibly dangerous and uncertain so even though the country believes it's sending the food it could easily by be diverted stolen or even sold to a different audience you know or to a different uh, group and now the final sort of like nail in the coffin just to prove i'm going to pick up points just to absolutely demonstrate i can give an example of food aid sent by the u.s to lebanon in 2019 or 2021 or whatever that never reached its intended um, destination and was in the end used to feed uh, the lebanese army i don't know i don't know but it sounds realistic okay so that's body paragraph one and you can hopefully you heard me i had to keep on redirecting myself reorientating myself to not talk about the solutions and talking about the solutions in body paragraph two and i've mentioned it before so for the solutions we can say rather than sending aid governments could send um money 
directly that could be invested in um, a farming agricultural program run by honest politicians and local st- and local stakeholders who can decide which is the best crop, to, which which are the best crops to develop. Number two, they can send machinery to improve improve the productivity of the farming. And third, they could send um, expensive, high grade. Uh, genetically modified seeds in order to improve production. Uh, This was the case when the US sent, I don't know, hybrid GMO modified soybeans to to Vietnam in order to improve productivity and and decrease the burden on food aid after um, the Civil War. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, but it's realistic. It's believable. Personally, I'm not a big fan of GMO food, but it doesn't matter. I'm writing this essay to score points in the exam. I'm not writing it to to persuade the examiner to eat or not eat GMO food. That's not my war. That's not my battle. My battle is to get this exam passed. So I'm going to write anything down that helps me pick up points and helps me communicate a clear argument. So there we go. Pretty much done it. All the causes embody paragraph one, why hunger is still an issue despite receiving aid. Body paragraph two, solutions. Clear cut. Introduction and conclusion will be a summary of both of those. Straightforward. Number two, compared to the past, more younger adults take medi- medications for degenerative diseases. Pro- provide specific reasons and examples to support your answer it's not very easy in my honest opinion so let's see compared to the past so we have to compare so some useful conjunctions here are whereas or while or in comparison to all of these are going to be expected if we're writing an essay answering the question compared to the past Right then, so reasons. (laughs) Body paragraph one, reasons. Modern technology, I could say people, younger adults are taking more medications nowadays, largely because of one, job stress, modern technology, uh, let's see, and modern environment, the modern environment and the internet. Oof. So let's break it down a little bit further. I'm going to talk about mental stress or because, because I can easily develop this one in body paragraph one. And then in body paragraph two, I'll probably talk about technology. So body paragraph one, modern stress. People are working longer hours more than ever. Inflation is making it is making life harder for people. Um, job security has been slowly eroded over the last 20 years so uh, employees are in a more precarious situation than ever before and finally a lot of workers have student loan debt which only adds to the stress okay so I've got four reasons there and I would probably just list them and then maybe develop each one um or develop one or two in more detail with an example afterwards. But the main point I want to communicate here is that body paragraph one is all about mental health. And this is why, um, let's see, take medications for degenerative diseases. So I believe, or it is believed, is probably a better way to say it. It is believed that the modern situation and the negative effects it has on mental health is causing an increase in degenerative diseases. And this is why more younger adults are taking medication compared to the past. So I have to get in there, into that essay, that final sentence that you just heard. Otherwise, I'll be writing all about mental health, which is not the direction. So I just need to definitely link those two together, link my ideas, make it a whole coherent essay, and we're good. We're golden. 
body paragraph two, I'm going to talk about younger adults take medication, take more medication compared to previous generations for degenerative diseases because of modern technology. Modern technology has proved to has been proven to negatively uh, uh, let's see to negatively impact stress which is a major cause of degenerative diseases. Um, oof. Yeah, I'm talking about mental health again, but I can back it up with my studies. So I'll say, for example, social media has, has, has been proven to have a negative effect on stress, which is a key factor for degenerative diseases. Furthermore, modern technology, such as smartphones and laptops, and all the radiation and electromagnetic exposure has also had has also been proven to be a factor, a major factor in the increase in degenerative diseases. Okay, I don't know if that's entirely true, but I'm going to prove it in the essay. I'm going to write about it in a clear, coherent way, in a confident way. And again, I'm not getting points for my knowledge on degenerative diseases. <laughs> I will be picking up points for writing a strong, coherent, impressive essay that's well structured, that's got linking devices all the way through, and that's going to be clear, and it's going to score points for task response because I keep on going back to the point of medications and degenerative diseases. And I've, fair enough, I'm talking about stress and talking about mental health, but if I link it to an increase in degenerative diseases, it's all fine. So I've got my two body paragraphs there. And as you've heard me say before, once we've got those in place, the conclusion and the introduction will largely, to keep, will largely take care of themselves. Final essay that we're going to talk about today. In your opinion, what do you think are the factors that contribute to longevity? List some examples and reasons to support your answer. Quite straightforward here. Body paragraph one. Factors that contribute to longevity are health, obviously. Um, so let's go a little bit more specific. I'm going to say exercise for body paragraph one. Uh, healthy lifestyle, because then I can talk about exercise and I can talk about diet. Okay, and I'll probably talk about sleep as well. Um, so those three factors, and I can easily develop those. Studies showed that, um, let's see, senior citizens who exercised for over 20 minutes a day um, were improved had a higher life expectancy, had a 30% higher life expectancy than those who, uh, part, those who did not partake in any exercise. So there again, some more vocabulary, life expectancy. And I'm talking about senior citizens because it's rude to talk about old people. We have to say seniors or the elderly. It's just that those little bits of knowledge that you pick up when you're writing about this and you're getting your feedback you know you start to realize that oh or you get your tutor tells you you can't use old that's rude use these alternatives like i just suggested so body paragraph one i'm talking about a healthy lifestyle body paragraph two i'm going to talk about technology why because personally i am a fan of technology and i can easily bend this topic around most of, practically any topic actually I can but I can bend technology into health I can bend it into crime maybe I can bend it into I don't know finance in this case I'm going to say that technology is a major factor why people are living longer for example heart monitors and glucose measure, measuring devices have drastically fallen in cost, making them widely more widely available. This has helped people um, keep, have a better idea of their health and of their, I don't know, of their vital measurements, so to speak. 
I could even say technology has also reduced um, common causes of death. For example, the technology of the braking technology in cars has increased tenfold since the 1970s, therefore making the roads safer and allowing people to live to a longer uh, to live for a longer period um, on Earth, or to live for a longer amount of time. Okay, I can easily develop that and give examples of why technology, in this case, braking technology, has reduced the deaths, allowing people, uh, more people, to live a longer life. There we go. Body paragraph one, life, healthy lifestyle. Body paragraph two, technology. And again, this is like me verbally brainstorming my ideas. Once I've brainstormed all of these and I've got it in bullet points, all I have to do is drop it into a decent framework that helps me connect it all together, forces me to coherently connect it all together. And then I send it into my tutor, she, the XIELTS examiner, not me personally, I'm just talking if I was a student on the course, the, the tutor would give feedback saying this vocabulary is amazing or well done, you've improved a lot since the last essay. And however, this vocabulary you need to improve or you can't use this phrase. Here's your essay back, keep going and here's your next question. You know, and you get that momentum and you start improving faster and it becomes easier and that's the whole process with the online course. That's what we're aiming for, to improve your work, to, to help you improve your essay writing, and to help you get past band seven or higher. Our XILS examiners, obviously native English speakers, can help you get there. That's it from me today. Um, please get in contact if you need more guidance, if you need more help, we are here. We've got lots of students passing the exam every single week and we just want to help you as well. So you can do this. You have got the, the intelligence. You've learned your own language. You've probably, I don't know, learned medicine. You've probably emigrated. You've got all these amazing qualities that the average person has never done. Maybe they've never lived abroad. Maybe they've never uh, had the ambition to go study abroad. So if you've got the ambition, you've got half of the problem solved. You just need to apply that uh, ambition and get that guidance. And that's why we are here to help you get that final grade and move on in life. So good luck with your IELTS preparation. And I really do wish you a fantastic, confident IELTS exam. All the best. IELTSPodcast.com.